Welcome back to the channel. In this mini-series I'm showing you how I built this edition and what I did differently from conventional North American construction. Today is all about doors and windows, so let's get into it. Every house needs windows for light and for views. With my background in Passive House, hint, watch Passive House explained in 90 seconds if you don't know what Passive House is. With my background in Passive House, I went with European tilt and turn style windows. They use wooden frames and aluminum cladding and I chose them for a few good reasons. The core of these windows is wood. That means they're structurally very strong and it insulates very well and evenly. Let's compare this to a vinyl window. Vinyl windows on paper will insulate just as well as these do, but there are internal plastic ribs that can create thermal bridges and the temperature on the inside face of vinyl windows can actually be different depending on where you're looking at. On wood windows, they're always warm. Wood keeps a consistent temperature on the inside. On the outside, they use aluminum cladding which holds up very well. One very important detail is that there is an airspace between the aluminum cladding and the wood core. And this allows any moisture that is trapped in between there to dry out. This specific window here is quadruple glazed. Um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to show you this. Here you can see a wooden core or a wooden frame. And then this is part of the aluminum framing. It also has another piece of glass in here, um, but that's not the same style of window that I chose for everywhere else. The glazing unit in this window is triple glazed and has a U value of 0.6, which translates to roughly R9, which is about as high as an insulated 2x4 wall. So we're actually seeing a very high insulation value through these windows here. One of the features that some people are a bit challenged with is that the wood frame is a bit thicker, um, but it really just depends on how you install it. It's not that noticeable once it's installed. As you can see, the window frame that is mounted inside of the wall is barely noticeable. And on large, it's really not too big either. I'll show you the other windows in a second. Uh, but yeah, judge for yourself. Uh, they can be purchased with a thinner profile as well, but this is a standard profile on most European windows. As you may have noticed, the operation is a little bit different from windows that you're used to. Tilt and turn really just means that you can turn it open and for ventilation, you can tilt it. Sometimes people are afraid that the tilted part actually sticks in too far and could be in conflict with drapes or anything else. Because these walls are fairly thick, it doesn't actually protrude at all. So whereas tilting the window is excellent for ventilation, turning it open lets in a lot more air and it also dramatically simplifies cleaning of these windows. You may have noticed that there's no insect screen on these windows at this point, um, but that's just because I haven't ordered them yet. They install right into these grooves here and then sit on the outside. You can seasonally remove them, which is what I do every winter. I clean them and I store them away and it just makes them last even longer. But yeah, they just slide right in there. If somebody's more specific about this, they are sitting on the outside. You can't really put them on the inside as they be uh, conflicting with the operation of the window. So that also means it reduces the glare on the outside. Some architects really like the glass to have a, an elegant glare on the outside, but you're losing that with your insect screens. Above the desk, I installed a fixed window and you'll notice right away, it's going to be a lot harder to clean this window because I can't tilt it open. I installed it high um, so that I get a lot of privacy here and I'm not distracted when working in this desk. It is a standing desk and I'm standing right now. I can still increase the height of this desk a bit more. Uh, it lets a lot of beautiful light in and it connects me to the nature outside, which I really enjoy. But it doesn't distract me from anything going on out there and nobody can look in either. 
It is a little bit high up on the outside, so I do need a step ladder to clean it. And you'll also notice this funky facade design here that makes it a bit more tricky. I'll show you what this facade looks like in its entirety from the outside at a later point. For the door, I chose to go with a fully glazed unit as well. It uses the same triple glass window pane here and a wood frame. The only difference is on the outside, it does not have the aluminum cladding. Normally I'd be worried about that, um, but it actually turns out that after five years, it still looks perfectly like it was new. One of the key differences that the manufacturer did here is when they painted this, is that they dipped the entire frame into a primer so that the coating could flow into all the little nooks and crannies and then they painted the anthracite gray on top of it. It's a fully glazed unit, which is actually cheaper than using a panelized door or a door with a solid panel. And that's because it uses fairly standard window profiles. Things are beefed up to it and it's got a different mechanism on it to make it just turn. But that's an effective way of reducing some of the costs for a big main door. This door is actually four foot wide by eight foot tall it really gives a grand entrance and people notice it right away. For the privacy of the store, a matte finish was installed and there's a one inch strip on the side here, which actually allows you to peek through it to see who's outside for safety reasons as well. But it provides privacy on the inside, still lets light in and you can still peek out. One thing to make sure when installing a door like this, because of the weight of the sash, it can really impact how strong it uh, slams. And so you need to make sure that the frame around it is nicely beefed up. I actually have triple studs on the outside of that just to make sure that there's lots of wood behind it that I could screw into. It closes very nicely and don't need to slam it at all. When you lock it, there's three locking pins across it. In my opinion, it's probably easier to break in through the wall than it is to break in through the store. Coming back to this window, you may notice that it's actually a different frame color. That's because this was a demonstration window from another manufacturer that I had in storage. This was a window that I was using for models to show people how to use passive house walls and how to integrate windows. While editing this video, I realized I never explained that the different frame color actually became a feature. I wanted that side of the room to set itself stylistically apart from the other side of the room and that different frame color actually helps with it. Back to the... But when I was building this addition, I noticed I would really like to actually have a north facing window because it aims out towards the street. One of the special features on this window is that it has integrated window blinds. It's very nifty. And the cool thing is that it's on the outside of the triple glazed unit. So any heat that hits it actually stays on the outside. And that's also the reason why there is a fourth piece of glass in here. This lets you access the blinds and you can clean behind here. It also keeps the heat out here and there are special ventilation holes at the top so that any of the hot air can just dissipate. One cool thing is that this is actually an RF remote. When I remove it here, you'll see the casing. You could order this window without the remote installed in it. And the cool thing is that it has multiple channels, so it can actually talk to multiple other windows. So you can program what happens to which button. Another really cool feature is that it's actually solar powered and it has an internal battery that gets charged by the solar panel and then operates that window. So there's no cables that need to be installed to this window. Just open it halfway or all the way. This really is an excellent feature for a passive house, especially on west and east facing windows so that you can reduce the solar impact in the morning or in the evening. And then of course in the south as well, if you don't have any other shading that is planned for the south side. As for the installation of the windows, I'll show you some clips here. One of the very important thing is that I over insulated over the frame 
The frame and the installation gap is the weakest part in your entire wall as far as insulation is concerned. And if you bring the insulation over top of the frame as much as you can, you're really increasing performance of that weak spot in the wall. As for the insulation in the gap between the window and the wall, I used an expanding foam tape. This stuff is quite magical. It really increases the speed of installation and it expands into the full size of the gap and it moves with the building. So if there's ever any settlement or any slight movements in there, it doesn't crack like a spray foam would, but it moves right into that surface right there. One other feature that I find very critical on these windows is that the window still on the outside is fully integrated. There is a drip edge at the bottom of the window that the window sill mounts into. In German, we call this constructive waterproofing. So this doesn't rely on a sealant to waterproof the window, but just how the water runs down the front surface of the window, it has to drip down onto the sill and can run back. On the outside, this window sill protrudes another inch past the wall so that all the water actually drips away and does not land on the wall where it now has a path to go inside again. Windows are a crucial part of the air barrier and it's important that they seal properly. These windows have either three or four seals integrated right into them to make sure that they are tight when they're closed. On top of it, this mechanism really pulls them tight and then has these multiple gaskets all sealing off properly. There's one right here, two, three. This window has three, some of them have four. And again, because they're part of the air barrier, now that we've made sure that the sash seals against the frame, we also need to make sure that the frame is sealed properly against the wall. To make sure that I don't have any air leaks there, I taped over that as well even though the triple expanding foam tape also acts as an air barrier. But I just wanted to make sure that I don't have any problems there down the road. With the window on the south side here, you can see I have the light wooden frame, which I personally prefer. Here you can see the operation again. I can tilt it for ventilation and I can open it to either let more air in or to simply clean it. Here you can also see a different window covering that is on the inside and it does block in some of the heat, especially on a hot day like today. I haven't seen any downsides to it. I think over time it's going to deteriorate a little bit more because there's heat stuck in there. I always make sure that the top is not completely closed so that air can actually ventilate out there. But the cool thing is I can actually draw this down. So now. I still keep privacy, but I have more light coming in from the top, or I can also just pull it out of the way completely. This window I brought right down to the ground. The cool thing about that is that it gives you a sensation of the room being a little bit bigger. You could also use this as a balcony door, and you would specify a lower threshold. Many Germans are still picking this just as a regular balcony door and they just step over that. That's everything about these windows today. Would you use these if you had a renovation project or a new home construction coming up? Or are there drawbacks you just can't live with? Next week is going to be about the facade and the roof of this project and how that's part of the performance of this wall. If you don't want to miss that episode, make sure you subscribe Maybe ring that little notification bell to be notified right when that goes live. Leave me a like if this helped you. It would really help this channel out. See you next time.